What's going on, everybody? We got a pile of junk and a Project One box to go with it. Um, I think we're building a time trial bike, another one. And um, it's my friend Scott, who's right here. <laughs> And Lalo's here too. He's not getting a new bike though. He's just eating. Uh, what food did you get? What is it though? What is, What did you get though? Oh, I, I, got, I got time for Okay. That. He's like, I'm eating food. Let me see this. I, I just did them. I just did an ad. Good. Okay. It's <laughs> but yeah, we got some. We got some stuff here. We got all these like bits and bobs. And then we're gonna have um, even more once we open the box. You want to open the box? Speed concept builds are notorious for having just way too many parts and. There's nothing in that part of the check though. <laughs> Newbie box opener. I always love seeing how people open these boxes. So that, that's the instruction manual box. Oh, but there, it's printed on it, the instructions of how to open the box. Oh. Yeah. Step one. <laughs> Step two. What, what do you, I've, I've had a couple of people open these boxes and it's kind of, it's kind of confusing and Trek definitely, I want to I wanna know the amount of R&D Trek spent on this box because it's ridiculous. Did you read the instructions? I tried. <laughs> uh, well, Jimmy was able to pull it out like that in a previous video. That's not what it tells you to do though. Yeah, that's what I mean. Did you read the instructions? Jimmy's like a weightlifter though. He like could just muscle it. You figured it out. Any bikes off <laughs> I don't think that's never actually happened. I don't think. Yeah, this is a speed concept. It's, uh, it's, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this in the video. It's radioactive coral. It looks very pink, but on the camera, it's like less pink and more orange. Very pink in person. Um, but yeah. All right. So I got this bike here. We're going to unbox it here, but so this is a speed concept SLR six. SRAM, it comes with SRAM uh, rival on it. Yeah, so Scott's a pro triathlete and um, he wanted, we're gonna do like a pretty high-end build with this one. But the reason why we didn't just buy a high-end one um, is because he wanted like just specific parts that are, a lot of them are aftermarket that you can't get from Trek. So we just got the cheapest one that he liked and we're gonna sell the rival bow. It's only a, it'll be a crank cassette and a derailleur set. Um, and then we're gonna put some uh, really awesome stuff on it. So. We'll get to it. Cool. So yeah, we got a, a SRAM rival group here and we're gonna take it off the bike. Yeah, so I almost got the whole bike part taking the crank off. Um, we're, okay, so further explanation. Um, the brakes, there's no upgrade to that. Like they're the best SRAM TT brakes already. So luckily we don't have to do that because that would be the hardest thing. So. All I gotta do is take this um, perfectly good drivetrain off to put in a better one. We got a full SRAM Red setup here. I can't wait to show you the gear ratio because it's kind of wild. All right, so I wanted to film this. Normally I don't have to do this because we do a lot of frame sets. This is sketchy to remove. I have an Abbey tool here. Sometimes I I've personally stripped one of these and I really regretted doing that. Take a look at it. I keep this around so everyone can remember. One time we had to Dremel one of these because we screwed up and the tool slipped and the only way to get it off was to cut the flanges off until it released its pressure. So whenever you're removing T47 internal bearing bottom brackets, just be really careful. So like what I try to do is put the tool on and you really gotta be careful and apply like constant pressure. Yeah, see? Got it. But yeah, it's just one of those things where like there's not a lot of room for the tool and you don't want to ruin it because it's like just a night. There's not a good solution if you like strip the flange. It, once you do it once, it's pretty much done and you're going to have to do some surgery. So just a fair warning, anybody working on a T47 bottom bracket, internal bottom bracket. You ready? I'm going to try to do something. Power scales. Am I filmed? Oh yeah, you're rolling. Okay. <laughs> Strong. So this is this is a BB Infinite, but it's not the normal ones that I use. I use the cheapo ones with the steel bearings. This is their best bottom bracket. It's got some crazy, well, it's got ceramic bearings, but it also has the coating, and that's just some voodoo juju magic there. Um, the, they call it Ceramitech. It feels great. 
I don't know what it does. It's probably good, and we're gonna put it in this bike, and it'll go, it'll go fast. Bike go fast. Bike <laughs> <laughs> go fast. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've highlighted this many, many times, but you have the, the bottom bracket, and then this is actually just some nylon or plastic and kind of catches the other side. And so let's get it thrown in the bike. So I'm just gonna put it, the, the cable on this bike, I don't like it when it goes low like that, so I'm gonna try to, eh, let's see how it feels. Eh, I think it's gonna be okay. One thing they updated these bottom brackets, it's now got a step in it for all the cables to route. And so I think it'll be okay if we put that brake cable underneath. I think it's gonna work. It should thread in that easy. If it's not, you're doing something wrong. And then always put the other side in, get a shot of this. So you can see it on this side. You wanna put this side in too, so it catches the other side. And this is the fun part. I got lithium grease all over myself. Hopefully that's not Hazardous. I just undid. <laughs> oh no. Okay. I'm very good. I'm not very good at left and right. I'm like so dyslexic that I can't even like read a book really. And left and right's another big chunk. I don't have any clue. All right. So now. Normally. Oh. Okay. I lied to everybody. I'm so sorry. Dang it. Normally it like catches the other side and it threads in together which is really cool but it's really not a big deal if it doesn't do that oh there you go hmm i don't like that let's let's investigate what's going on Never be afraid to undo something if you don't like what's going on because there's probably a reason you don't like what's going on. And if you just keep going without investigating, you might cause a problem. There we go. Remember, this is just nylon, so it's not, I don't know if it's actually nylon, but don't crank on that. <sighs> okay, and then we got some uh, SRAM Red stuff. All right. And then this is, I'm, I'm just being stupid. Let me just, <laughs> wow. What the hell are we gonna do with this thing? 56. 5643. I didn't actually know that this was a thing that you could buy. And then Scott was like, yeah, buy that one. It's the biggest one. Now there's a reason for that that I was later told. Um, the idea, and you can chime in if I'm wrong, is that you you want to keep your chain in the middle of the cassette. Is that right? Yeah, just keep the, the chain as straight as possible. Yeah, so you want to, because you don't want to put it in the like less efficient, smaller cogs and keep the chain as straight as possible, compensate with the biggest chain ring you can find. Um, I've seen this done with one by, um, Scott wanted a two by so he could still climb. Although I don't know who's gonna be climbing with a 43 tooth, um, whatever, not my bike. Actually also comes with its own special derailleur. And what's special about it is it's got an extra hole here. I have another one. This is the one that came on the bike. So just so you can see, I'm gonna take this bolt out. Ah. Okay, so do you see how they drilled an extra hole in it? And it's so you can put it up higher so you can actually shift the dang chain, which I'm really curious to see how it shifts, but let's uh, let's find out. All right, cool. So um, this is an eight bolt setup. You can't really screw it up. And then one thing I wanted to show is that I highly recommend if you do a lot of work with uh, corks uh, to get this torque key. It's four Newton meters on all these little bolts. And I think if you over tighten this it actually screws up your power data so just invest in this little tool because it'll make your life better and you just you'll know it'll be the right torque setting you should probably torque everything on a bike to the right torque setting um sometimes i know i don't but this is probably one of the moments that this is one of the things where you want to make sure it's right Paulo got really curious and wanted to open the thing what do you think's in there i don't know i'm guessing batteries batteries no little compartment for for your kit for your, your whoopsie, I had a doopsie. What did you, did you? Tube tire. Oh, it just, it has a little strap, little compartment. Stash a tube, 
Stash some tools. Are you gonna put anything in there? Mm. What do you thread through this thing? I don't know. A CO2. CO2. Ah. <laughs> Look at this beast. Jeez, it won't even fit in the shot. I'm gonna have to like sit on the ground to even film it. Okay. So we got this crank on and everything's preloaded and everything. And we don't, Scott didn't bring any pedals. So I might throw some pedals in it for the spin test. Cause I think with more weight though, it would look even cooler. Maybe we should do it. Find some pedals really quick. Just so we can do the test with fair weight and it's preloaded correctly. How long is it going to go? No, it's, it, 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 like, it just never stopped. We never tell you how long it went. Stopped. Well, looping it would make it slower. Oh, it's going backwards now. That's awesome. What? Oh, oh, I almost stopped it. <laughs> it never stopped. <laughs> it never stopped. So yeah, that was probably the best spin test we've done. So we're going to do 140 rotors too. Um, so I got to take off the little bracket guy. And should just be able to see undo these bolts too and then it should just bolt right back onto the frame and, and fit a 140 no problem are are 140s more aerodynamic arrow is everything in this build oh so you don't replace it with a different one you just put no it no because the spacer gives it the 20 mil ah, yeah, and you yeah. just bolt it right onto the frame gotcha sweet so we got a a zip super nine and um i wanted to take this opportunity to shout out uh cadence collection for making this awesome shirt uh we did put tubeless tires on this bike i'm definitely tubeless, tubeless. at all times um but yeah let's put this on um obviously this is not like the bike came with those wheels those are great wheels too do you race do you ride this every day the disc no no okay but for the video um, I just wanted to kind of show it off in its like race configuration. So we're gonna put it all together um, like you would for a race. Um, I don't remember what size this cassette is, but it's really small. Kind of looks funny, honestly. <laughs> Big yeah. ring, small cassette. Big ring, small cassette. And then uh, we got some zipper, zipper doodle lock rings too. This is actually interesting. Sh Shimano owns the center lock patent um, and then Zip finally gave up and just decided that that was what everybody does. So um, now they make center locks, which is actually pretty recent. Here we go. Jeez. It's almost like an instrument. I would love to play the Zip Sup Super 9 disc in a band someday. <laughs> a man can dream. A man can dream. <laughs> this is honestly hilarious. So barely got enough room to bolt onto the thing. It's like at the very top. That's so funny. Like the, it's one of the goofiest things I've ever put on a bike. I know it's like, there's like a very normal reason to do this. Um, like there's a logical reason to do this, but it's just such a goofy thing, like to put a chain ring this big on a bike. So we're gonna figure this out. We got Aero Coach. Is that what it's supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> this is fancy stuff. And I refuse to read the instructions. So we're just gonna do it. So far I've been able to figure out the first step. You gotta put the wire guy through the hole. And that's as far as I've gotten. One other thing I wanted to point out with uh, the build. Not, we're not just swapping out the tower. We're actually swapping out the uh, base bar also. This is the stock base bar. This is the uh, low TT base bar. It's uh, significantly narrower. And also it's like negative 13 or something. Luckily it didn't come installed because that's going to save us like an hour of taking this one apart. So we can just throw this away, use this one instead. We're figuring this out. This is the uh, extension piece for it. Um, and you need to bolt this onto the bottom first, but before you do that, you gotta route the wire through it all. So just throw the wire into the can there. There we go, got the wire through. So now with that out of the way, you don't have to worry about it. And then now we can bolt this top piece on. Again, we did not read the instructions because that would be a bad idea. We're just gonna figure it out. I think this, okay, so the small ones go there, the big ones go there. That's not the right size tool. 
honestly, it's really cool to work on something like this um, Aero Coach stuff. I know it's kind of expensive, but um, it's definitely well made. Not my not my expertise by any means, but um, I guess it is my expertise. I'm a freaking triathlon bike guy. I don't even do triathlon or any interest in doing any triathlon, but we sell so many of these speed concepts, it's not even funny. I bet I, I, I bet I've built more. 2020 the newest generation speed concept than anybody maybe a pro mechanic has beat me but like a bike shop dude like i'm i've built like 16 of these things now if anybody beat me let me know because you would deserve an award so now with this bolted on we got our wire through now we just have to I, I love the little channel for the the wire too um and then this is totally adjustable there's tons of spaces for it where do you want me to start it scott just like far or in i'm sure you'll change it um further out okay so i'll put it at it's i don't even know if that's like is that really like it's, but I guess it has holes, I, I, I'll trust them. They made this really easy to figure out what bolt goes where because um, they only have two sizes and if you get, you can't even mess it up. So appreciate that. I was joking about not reading the instructions, but we legitimately didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so funny looking, it's like so long. Without like pinching it. So like, that's what it looks like. I guess, yeah, there's no cover for that or anything. I don't think so. There. I mean, the 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 pad, the arm pad goes there. Oh, I see. Yeah, it'll cover that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's like that's some serious length on there. I bet you changed that. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> cool. Um. So yeah, I think that's really cool looking, and it's a cool setup. Um. There is a water bottle holder that kind of goes in the middle, but I'll show that off later. Um, but yeah, let's get the other side going and um, we're gonna do that off camera. We got this um, and it's adjustable So we're not gonna worry about it too much right now and I got the hoses now We're gonna shove them through I already preemptively took all the routing pieces out so that we don't have anything to help us We're just gonna shove um, hmm. That wasn't very hard at all. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put the brakes on, we're getting the olives ready so that whenever I cut the hose, I don't have a lot of fluid leaking out everywhere. We've already kind of pulled this through the frame. I usually cut it like, I don't know, cut it too long, but like right there is good. I got all the rest of the pieces, get the nut on there and then get the barb installed. All good there. And then um, these brakes are um, the same. It doesn't matter which side goes where, so you can just pick and you just wanna thread it on. One time I was working in a shop and a, a college kid was installing a hydraulic brake and he, um, he he put this tool on the nut with the like fully enclosed side. And so whenever he was done installing it, it just literally had like a wrench hanging off of it. And it was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> the reason you wanna leave these long is just in case you ever wanna like change anything, cause it'll shove into the frame, no problem. So might as well leave yourself some room to mess around with. Um, and one other thing we'll test is, does it work? Yes, it works. So no bleed on that. We're gonna get the rest of them installed off camera. But, I mean, there's nothing, you know, like, that, that was pretty big for me, not having the, the stock. Hey, uh, I've been doing this bicycle riding. It's fun, you should do it. Does it work? It rides. <laughs> it rides. <laughs> we gave up yesterday and we decided to turn to building this in the morning. Honestly, there wasn't that much left to do. We got the chain on and we were able to finish up putting the cockpit on. It's pretty simple to bolt it on. The idea is to get like super narrow like this. It's actually really comfortable. We're, we didn't put the pads on it yet because he doesn't know where it's gonna be um, permanently. We got some taco bar tape, but um, I, 
It's a cloth bar tip, so whenever I went to do the cut, it was spraying a lot, and I might redo it. He, he says he doesn't care, but like I kind of care. Got zip wheels. The one thing that was really hard to figure out was this uh, shifting. It kind of struggles on the, the shift. Um, but we were able to get it to work um, pretty well. So this one was a fun one to build. It's like a more unique speed concept than um, just the stock one. Uh, let us know if you guys want any uh, time trial stuff or triathlon stuff or just bikes in general. We love to do custom builds like this and this one is especially custom. Pretty much tore a bike apart and rebuilt it with all new parts. So pretty cool, fun thing to do. Anyway, we'll see y'all later.